Hi, everybody. I'm Jessica Miras. I'm an actress and writer living in Los Angeles, California. Um, it's my first time using a PowerPoint. I'm very excited. <laughs> you might know me or have seen me in some shows such as Supergirl, Major Crimes. That's me in the bottom corner. I was a detective, very serious. Chasing Life, or my personal favorite, Drunk History, where I was a drunk storyteller. Yes, I was actually drunk. <laughs> I was born and raised right here in El Paso, Texas, and I'm really proud of it. I love our city. Uh, my mom is from Ciudad Juarez, just across the border from us, and she moved here when she married my father, a white guy from Central Texas. They have a really adorable story of how they met and fell in love, which is a story for a different day. But it's actually how I got the job on Drunk History. I uh, filmed myself, drunk, telling the story. I sent it to the producers, and I guess they loved it because I got the gig. Just like that. Welcome to Hollywood. Anyway, I left El Paso at 18 to pursue my dream of making it as an actress in Hollywood, and I've been out there ever since. In early August of this year, just six weeks ago, the city of Socorro reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to do a TED Talk for this event. And I was like, what a TED Talk? Me? Well, it was a message in my Instagram, so I wasn't sure if it was real, but I loved the idea of being a TED Talk speaker. I just kind of left it in my inbox for a little bit, just ignoring it. And, but who am I kidding? I knew I was going to say yes. How often in my life am I going to get the opportunity to give a TED Talk? To be amongst my hero, Brene Brown? Or be like Tony Robbins? I even have the mic? Malala? Me? <laughs> well, how often am I going to get to do a PowerPoint? I said yes. Yes, I'm going to do it. And then I was terrified. What am I going to talk about? <laughs> what am I going to talk about? At the time, six weeks ago, I was technically unemployed. I wasn't filming anything, and I didn't have a premiere right around the corner that I could brag about and feel good about coming up here. I was in a lull, quite honestly. And so I thought to myself, well, I better book a job before then before I give this TED Talk, or I'm going to be a real failure. I better book a job, or it's going to be a tragedy. Uh, how can I call myself an actress, a working actress in Hollywood, if I'm not actually working at the time, right? Ignoring the fact that I've been on all those TV shows, and I just shot a movie in Maine, I've been in the industry for 10 years, but what am I worth as a person if I'm not working right now? How am I going to inspire anybody? So I thought to myself, well, I'll just talk about something totally different. I'll talk about... Uh, my cultural identity, or the greatness of this city, gender inequality. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> Unless you guys want to hear that from me. There's still time. I can change it. No, I, I thought to myself, okay, I have a month to book a big job so that I can have enough clout to talk about being a working actress from El Paso and Hollywood so that I don't disappoint anybody. A month to do what actually feels like winning the lottery. No pressure, Jessica. Well... I'm very happy to report I somehow made that happen. I want to show you, thank you. <laughs> I want to show you a video of me on a very good morning, August 26. <laughs> That's me in my jammies in the morning. And I want to read to you an excerpt from my journal, actually taken straight from my journal. It's August 26, 2022. I just found out I booked a recurring role acting on a CW TV show that shoots in Vancouver two weeks from now. Another bad girl. I love playing the bad girl. The surprise trip my boyfriend planned for us, where I'm very likely getting proposed to, is scheduled for the very time I'm supposed to shoot my first episode of the show. I told him, this may mess up our trip. And he says to me, I guess I might as well tell you, the surprise trip was to Vancouver. 
So not only did I get my dream job, but I also get to go on my special trip. It's everything I've ever wanted. Yes, I'm elated. And now I feel terrified. That's so weird, isn't it? I don't know if that happens to any of you, but all of a sudden, everything feels like kismet. Everything that you've worked so hard for, it might be happening in that moment, and, and you feel fear that it's not real, that it's going to be ripped away from you, because I've had that happen to me before, and I know what that feels like, because that video has cost me. What you don't see in that video is the near 100 no's I got before that one yes. Six weeks before that video, this was not my life. I didn't know where my next paycheck was coming from, and I didn't know what I was going to do about it. I was grinding and hustling and, and spending a lot of money on this career that's really expensive to pursue. I was living alone in my apartment in Santa Monica, and I was waking up like this, and I think some of you can maybe relate. Ah! Now, this, this isn't my hero story I'm going to tell you, and it isn't a pity party, but I just want to give you a little glimpse into what my life is really like as a working actor. I'm not a celebrity, and I'm not a hobbyist. I'm a dedicated, lifelong pursuing career actor. It's a life of constant rejection. Yay! Imagine your last job interview. The work that you put into it, the nerves, the vulnerability of, of trying to sell yourself. I do that about 10 times a week because I'm lucky, because I have great agents and manager. Thank you. But I put my heart and my soul into every single one of those, hoping to be the one that gets chosen over 300 other brilliant, beautiful, dedicated actresses all vying for the same job. And I'm most likely getting a no. Even more likely, crickets. I hear nothing. It's a life of high highs. Opening, that was an opening night of a play I did in LA. And it's also low lows. My dog Toto can best show that. After all, only one person can get the job. Almost don't pay the bills and they don't go on your resume. And I've had some really awesome almost in my career, Star Wars level almosts. But I didn't get it, so it doesn't count. Except to my family, I guess. It's a lot of sacrifice, and I know I'm not alone here. I know a lot of other people deal with this in their jobs. That It's, it's really unpredictable. I, I never know for sure if I can make it home for Thanksgiving or your birthday, last-minute cancellations on dates, if I can make it to your wedding, although I will be at Alexa's because I am maid of honor in two weeks. If I get a job or I get a really good audition or even a crappy audition, I'm probably going to take it because it's my priority, and this is what I really, really want. I've let go of any security or predictability financially, professionally, personally. And it's a lot of self-doubt. Besides all of the rejection, much of my personal life, my professional life, I will be technically unemployed just by the nature of my job and have to deal with those very awkward encounters of, so what are you filming right now? What are you working on right now? Nothing. Nothing. Now, Right now, I have a really awesome job, and I can only say so much about it, but this new job will end, and I'll be right back to hunting for my food and right back to the grind. The grind of audition after audition, trying to get a job, falling in love with some roles, only to have what feels like having them yanked away from me. This is me here in my house in Texas, in El Paso, my dad, uh, I've locked myself in the back of the house. It says, Jessica is in audition and study. Please be quiet and do not disturb. Thank you, management. <laughs> Where I come in town sometimes to see my family, and I'm locked in the back of the house doing auditions. But, oops, I skipped forward. But I like the grind. I like it. I really do. I don't like the rejection and the self-doubt, but I like the work of it a lot. I love it. Because for a time while I'm just auditioning the part, it's mine. Mine. 
I get to embody that character in that world with amazing material from brilliant minds. Imagine some of your favorite shows and some of your favorite characters on those shows. It's very possible I auditioned for some of them and did my own take on them. I got to make them my own and live like them for a little while, which is what I do. I'll live like that character in my real life, walk around like them. How would they interact? What would she do here? What would she wear? I get groceries like she would. I order coffee at the coffee shop like she would, sometimes with an accent all day, whatever I may want to do. I get to imagine my life as if I had been born to a different set of circumstances and wants, and this was my life. Basically, I get to play pretend like when I was a kid, and boy, did I love to play pretend. Now, most of the time, that's it. I audition, I hear nothing, and I move on. Other times, it's harder. Sometimes, I really fall in love with a part, or I get really close, and I've been working on this for weeks, and I'm in there, and I'm in the mix, and, it's, and maybe I'm even pinned on hold. My life is on hold, and I don't get it. And it pains me, uh, it hurts in my stomach, I cry, I call my mom, we cry together. But when that yes comes, oh baby, it is just absolute bliss. I, I get to play pretend on, in the grandest way possible with sets and costumes and other professional make-believers that are all in on the same game of play pretend. We're all in on it and we're trying to make it the best possible. It is just wonderful. And it is the best, oh, that's me on Supergirl, levitating. I love it so much, you guys, that much. I get to dig in even more to the character. I throw myself in, it seeps into my everyday life. I don't care. I imagine what my life would be like if this was the hand I was dealt in life. I fall in love deeply. I make playlists for every moment during the scene. What would she listen to? And then it's the most fun when you show up on set, you've done all your preparation, they yell action, and you just go. You get to live in that moment. Or when you're in the theater and you're in the wings and a little red bulb goes on and that means go out. The curtains are about to open. No second guessing anymore. It's showtime, baby. Oh, it's a high that I love and I live for. Acting is my, my greatest joy and it's a huge source of pain and agony in my life. Is it worth it? TBD, quite honestly. But do I want to quit? Yeah, all the time. Like every six months, I want to quit. I guess what I'm saying is that I'm not not scared. I'm terrified all the time. It's the common thread. But I do it anyway. In fact, fear has kind of become my ally. I know that if I'm scared, it means that I care a lot and that I should probably do it. And I can't fail if I don't quit. And most of the time it doesn't work out, but sometimes it does. Now, six weeks ago, I was unemployed, alone in my apartment in Santa Monica, trying to find the confidence to, to come up here and do this in front of you beautiful people, to give this TED Talk. And today my life is unrecognizable from what it was just six weeks ago. I'm living in a new place with my love, I have a really cool new job. I'm here in front of all of you. It really can change just like that. You just have to hold on in the down times. Just hang on. And like they say in, in the Heights, con paciencia y fe, with patience and faith. Okay, so here's my TED Talk. I'm ready now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jessica Miras. I was born and raised in El Paso, Texas. I moved to Hollywood at 18 years old to pursue my dreams, and I'm doing it. Now, I haven't won an Academy Award, and I haven't won an Emmy, but I'm not Scarlett Johansson or Margot Robbie. My road is messy. <laughs> it's gritty. And it's mine. But today, today I'm killing it. And today it all feels worth it. 
I'm just the same little girl who grew up in El Paso and loved playing pretend with my sisters and my friends. And I feel tremendously lucky to still be able to be doing it. I'm not going to leave you hanging. He proposed. <laughs> Bam! And I said an emphatic yes! And then I was terrified! Thank you so much.